This short video will suggest to you certain accessibility settings which you should switch on when using your iPad in school. So I'm going to demonstrate some of the settings that I think you should turn on just as a matter of course on your iPad within your schools. The setting cog on my iPad is at the bottom of the screen on the right hand side and it's a, a cog wheel. So I'm going to click on the settings cog. By default it will probably take you to the general section in the settings window. You can see general over at the left hand side. And there are a variety of choices in the general window, but I'm actually going to go straight into accessibility. If I scroll through accessibility, you'll see it starts off with accessibility to do with vision, then interaction, hearing, media, and finally at the bottom, learning and accessibility shortcuts. If any function is linked to accessibility shortcut, then that will enable you to triple click the home button in order to activate that shortcut. I will demonstrate that later. So looking first of all at vision, voiceover and zoom, I wouldn't worry too much about these. If you have a child with vision difficulties in your school, you probably will have the involvement of sensory support and sensory support will explain how to use voiceover and zoom functions. Magnifier, you may or may not wish to turn the magnifier on. It's a handy function, a new function. And if you switch it on, what it will do is the magnifier lets you use your device's camera to quickly magnify things. When enabled, triple click the home button to start the magnifier. So if I switch that function on, what would actually happen is it's linked itself to the triple click home shortcut. And by pressing triple click, it will launch the camera. You could take a photograph of a piece of work and the pupil who is using the device can zoom using pinch to zoom. They can also add different filters to help with the vision of that piece of work. So it is a handy feature. It's not necessarily one that I would definitely enable, but it's something you may want to be aware of. Likewise, display accommodations. Display accommodations, you can invert the colours of the iPad. I'll demonstrate. It's not showing up very well on the, the recording, unfortunately, but what it does is it gives you a black and white, here we go, gives you a black and white screen and you can in invert the colours so. In addition, there are coloured filters that you can put on. So if I go to the coloured filters option. And by putting on the coloured filters, you can have a variety of choices. So we've got red green filter, green red filter, blue yellow filter, or a coloured tint. Now you're not seeing this very clearly on the screen that's being shown on the recording, but by changing the intensity and the hue of the colour, you can change the colours from yellow to blue to green, etc. So it's a bit similar to screen masking when you use the text out software. So that's display accommodations if you wish to use them. If we look at the magnifier, you'll remember I turned the magnifier on and it linked itself to the accessibility shortcut, the triple home, click home button. So you'll see that down at the bottom of my screen, accessibility shortcut is showing that the magnifier is linked to it. I'm going to turn the magnifier off. And if I scroll down, you'll see that the accessibility shortcut no longer has any feature linked to it. The next thing that I'm going to demonstrate is speech. I would definitely be turning these on in all of your iPads. I would turn on speak selection and I would turn on speak screen. 
which is useful when you're in Safari. You can decide how you want to highlight the content. By default, it will highlight the word and sentences, and it will underline as it's highlighting. But you can modify these. You can, if you wish to, change the voice. There are not many choices, but you can have a, a female and a male voice. Some of them it will ask you if you wish to download them. I'm just going to stick to study female. You can change the speaking rate also. So speak selection is on, speak screen is on. And I'm going to demonstrate what that actually looks like. So I'm going to go back to my home page and I'm actually just going to go into Microsoft Word for purposes of demonstrating. And I will open up the blank document. And using the Kidogo Plus keyboard, I'm just going to type some information in. So I'll just shrink down this keyboard. And because speak selection has been switched on, by pressing and holding on the iPad and letting go, I can now select all and now speak all. The same thing I said to you will be repeated. So there we go. That's how you would use speak selection. So an element of six speak there. Now I'm going to demonstrate speak screen. So if I go into Safari this time, And I have a website here about nuclear fission. And simply by using my two fingers and doing a two finger swipe from the top of the iPad, it should launch the speak screen. There we go. Nuclear fission, a nuclear reaction or a radioactive decay process in which the nucleus of an there we go. Obviously, the protons in here will speed up or slow down what is being read on the screen. So by enabling speak screen, I have that functionality. I'm going to close that down. Just to bring your attention, though, whilst we're on Safari, that on some websites, not all, you have a reader view, or you may have a reader view available. So if you look at the address line of this website, so wikipedia.org, and to the left of that, you can see an icon that resembles the left classification button. That shows that reader view is available. So I'm going to point and touch that option. And what it does is it strips out all the extra content so the screen becomes a bit easier to see and to read. In addition, if you look at the wikipedia.org website address, to the right of that, we have capital A's, one smaller, one larger, and if I tap those, that will enable you to change the background colour. There are four choices at the moment, and also to change the font style, and change the size of the font too. So some built-in features for some websites using the reader view. Just to reiterate again, through general accessibility and speech, I turned on speak selection, speak screen, and I would suggest that you do that as a matter of course on your school iPad. I'm going to scroll down, and the last thing that I'm going to say that should really be enabled in your school is something called guided access. Guided access will enable you to hook or contain a people within a certain app for a length of time. So the people can't, if they so desire, come out of the app, you set them a challenge for and choose to do different things on different apps. They can't meddle. So you'll see at the moment guided access is off at the bottom of my screen and I'm just going to put it on. Guided access. 
at the bottom to switch it on. It just says guided access keeps the iPad in a single app and allows you to control which features are available. To start guided access, triple click the home button in the app you want to use. So I'm going to put guided access on. I would suggest your school set a passcode. So that was the second option down there, passcode setting. Choose a passcode that every member of your staff will know. So perhaps the last four digits of your telephone number or um, the date of birth of a head teacher or something that every member of staff will know. But obviously don't share that with the children. I'm going to search for the passcode that I wish to use. There we go. Going back a step, time limits. You can, if you wish, set time limits. And if you do set time limits, you can have a sound showing or you can have it speaking an instruction. At the moment, I'm not going to set the time limit. But you'll see that by default, it has actually linked guided access to the accessibility shortcut. Now that means if you triple click the home button, that will start guided access and triple clicking the home button will get you out of guided access. So I would always suggest that you make sure the guided access is linked to the accessibility shortcut, the triple click button. So let's see how this works. I'm going to come out of, I'm going to come out of the settings and I've gone into an app. It's called my script calculator. It's quite handy actually because it obviously allows you to do certain calculations. It's a handy app. So anyway, if I want to put the people to be linked into this particular app, then I'm going to triple click that home button. What it's done is it's given me the guided app access settings around the perimeter of this screen. So you'll see that there is a time limit down at the bottom right hand side. And if I go into options, I can switch on the time limit and it can be switched on for any length of time, minutes, seconds, hours, etc. Some minutes maybe appear to be the smallest denomination. So at the top right hand side of the screen, I'm going to start guided access. Guided access is started, time limit a minute. So obviously, as a child, I can use that app. But if I get a wee bit bored, fed up of all of this, then I can try and press the home button and it will tell me that guided access is enabled. Triple click the home button if you want to get out of it. So if you're crafty and cunning, you will try to get out of it by triple clicking. But of course we set a passcode and that means that the people can't get out of that, that guided access option. So they'll have to continue with the app until such times as they are told that their time is up and they can get out of the app. Carry on at your discretion. There we go. A time limit of one minute has been set for guided access. Triple click to enter the guided access passcode. And you, as the teacher, can now at the top left hand side of the screen, end the session. So just to reiterate once again, through settings, you will automatically be put into general within accessibility. I would definitely be setting speak selection and speak screen. And right down at the bottom, I would definitely be setting guided access and making sure it is linked to accessibility shortcut, the triple click button. Thank you for watching this short video.
to show you which accessibility features you should enable on your school's iPad.